Yes. And so this is the fourth workshop and each workshop is based on teaching you how to write a type of poem or to use a tool of poetry. Um, I'm focusing really much on like the, the groundwork of poetry is, I don't call it beginning, the beginners, because a lot of us start writing poetry in our journals and to ourselves. So I'm not teaching you how to put words together. What we're doing is we're discovering different um, terms in poetry and different tools that can make our poems even much better than they are. Our first workshop, um, I think we wrote, we just wrote a poem. I walked you through, we used a metaphor, we used metaphors. And so we used an extended metaphor and we went through the process of putting together a poem. Our second workshop, we did a list poem, kind of like a grocery list, but um, poetic. And so we wrote list poems about different things. And then last week, <clears throat> we did, um, we spoke about, we spoke a lot about imagery and we also spoke about using the senses a lot in what we were writing. And so uh, many of us walked away writing um, with poems from that. And, um, and we also wrote a letter. We discovered, we explored tenderness in writing and using tenderness as a tool. So sometimes I won't be teaching you a tool of poetry. I will also, I will also be exploring a feeling and how that, well, which is feelings are also tools, right? So we'll be exploring a feeling. But today we're gonna be writing my favorite kinds of poems, um, vignettes. And so we're going to learn what that is and we're going to kind of touch back up on imagery and I know this sounds fancy, but it's not. It's all like usual stuff. And then I chose um, some Sandra Cisneros poems we're going to be talking about. And um, and so it's going to be good. Does anybody, how's everybody feeling? How's, you could talk to me. You could like unmute yourself and just Yay. kind of share. Excited for this uh, highlighted my week. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Brianna. Um, I'm excited too. I appreciate you working with this. Thank you, Cece. So before I get started, I always like to at least have someone, at least one or two people shared. So does anybody that came to the last workshop or any of the other workshops, do you have something you want to read? It could have been something you wrote during the workshops or something you wrote later on as a reflection or just wrote? Anybody want to share a poem? Who, you could, okay, if you want to share, you could always write me on the side and then I will call your name so that we don't have like a confusion. And also my rule, I have two rules for you before we do anything. And as I tell you guys this every time, one is that this is a safe space, right? Um, well, as safe as it can be on the internet, right? But <laughs> it's a space for you to be able to show up however it is that you show up. And we're all, um, uh, we're all in this together and there's no uh, levels and of what you're doing here. Everybody here is a poet. If you ever wanted to be a poet, by the end of this class, you will be one because you will write a poem. If you've written poems before, well, you're already here as a professional and you're um, expanding your craft. Uh, also, sharing isn't mandatory, but it is extremely welcomed. This is your space for you that we are holding. So if you are moved to share, please say on the side, I want to share. I usually can manage getting to everybody. It looks like we're a little bit of a smaller group today, so we might be perfect. Um, if you don't wanna share, that's fine. But if you're gonna go home and regret later, if well, you're home already, but if you're gonna turn off your computer and you're gonna regret not sharing, that's on you. That has nothing to do with me because I held the space for you and um, you're gonna have to live with that guilt, okay? So <laughs> Abby said she wanted to share a poem. Thank you, Abby, go ahead. Hello. Hi. Hi. So this is my first time ever reading any of my poems. Well, to here you go. So <laughs> let me just take it out really quick. Oh. So we'll do Abby, and after Abby, we'll do Ruby, and then we'll jump into the lesson, okay? Go ahead, Abby. Sorry, sorry. Let me look for it really quick. Oh. Do you want Ruby to go, and then you can go right after Ruby? Yeah, okay, Ruby can go. Okay, yes. Ruby, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. 
Can you hear me? Yes, a little quiet, but we can hear you. Okay. I know. I think my microphone's a little weak. Um, okay. It's okay. We'll we'll just put up our rhythm a little bit. Go okay. ahead. Um, this is a poem that I well, it's from the prompt, one of the prompts that you gave us last time. Um, the one that was writing a letter to a body part, I think is what it was, um, centering on tenderness. So this is, yeah, this is mine. Dear collarbones, you love like Guerrera. Collect my tears like rain. Harvest pain in handwoven baskets. Smelling of pine needles and winter. You put them all to bed under full comforters. Sing them to rest. Murmur bendiciones. My church of bone. Okay. That was beautiful, Ruby. Thank you. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you. Are you ready? Um, are you ready, Abby? Yes. Okay. Um, when love is scary, I am in love for the first time. It's not lust. It's not an obsession. It's a comfort, warmth, like the sunrise conversing your face for the first thing in the morning. It's not about the sex anymore. It's not about the game anymore. I am far too deep to win. I am scared for once in my life to lose someone. I want it to last as long as time itself, if only I can be here for you. As I'm learning to love my own life, as I'm learning to love to breathe for my own. Every little moment for once, I want time to pause because it keeps me running and I'll get closer to the time I won't have you in my life. The scary thought to know that I wasn't whole before, how now I want to complete myself. I'm scared of this feeling of love. Um, overcoming a past that still haunts me to be able to accept love. I'm in love and it's scary to have thought a stranger showed me love. Thank you so that. much for sharing, Abby. That was lovely. And thank you for being brave enough and for letting us be the first people to hear you read poetry out loud. Mm -hmm. So now you've done that. You've read poems in front of 40 people. So... <laughs> give yourself a round of applause thank, thank you, you so much <laughs> and i'm so uh honored to have been part of that 40 group of 40. um okay so we're gonna go into so before we do anything we're gonna refer like touch up a little bit on imagery right we talked about a lot about it last time and we talked about the senses so imagery is painting a picture in poetry by using the senses right so the senses are touch smell sight, hold on, I, I forget, and then I'd be like naming everything twice. Touch, smell, sight, sound, taste. So when you're trying to place people within an image in your poem, you want it to be something that they can um, recall, something that they, that they can recall, something that kind of like, that they can connect with. So even if they're not connecting with your story, they can connect with the senses, right? Like we touch things, smell things, taste things, see things, hear things and these are all very important tools to getting to getting folks to um kind of connect with poems right and so i pulled up um my beloved sandra my fairy godmother um <laughs> i pulled up one of her poems that has uh some beautiful imagery in it and um so we're gonna share that with you now with this fancy, fancy thing. And so then I press share. So I'm this is the first time I use share. Okay. So the poem that we're going to be reading is called I Understand It as a Kiss. I understand it as a kiss, but not a kiss. This gesture, this burning, but from an origin furthest from the heart. I recognize this is for me, and yet I sense I make no difference. I know if we say love, we speak of many things. You mean the Buenos Aires moon, the blonde street lamps, the dance you dance, but I know it, is, but I know it as the wrist, a shoe, a bruise, 
a bone, a stick. So, what tools of imagery did she use in that poem? Who, what, what did you see? What did you feel? Like, think of your senses. Who wants to share? Vamos a ver acá en el lado, sorry. Ah, 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 ah. Okay. So somebody said, you want me to keep it up? Okay, I just took it down because then I can't see your faces. <laughs> but we'll go back. I'll share it one more time. I share a screen. Ba -ba -da -ba -bum. So. Oh. Okay, it doesn't show me the chat. So I'm going to put it up again, okay? And then I just want, I'm going to read it through again one more time and then I'll take it down because I can't see the chat or I'm sharing this, the screen. I understand it as a kiss, but not a kiss. This gesture, this burning, but from an origin furthest from the heart. I recognize this is for me and yet I sense I make no difference. I know if we say love, we speak of many things. You mean the Buenos Aires moon, the blonde street lamps, the dance you dance, but I know it as the wrist, a shoe, a bruise, a bone, a stick. Okay. What parts of that were images that you are related with? Um, I think the burning, because that's like a sensation, that's a feeling. And yes. Um, okay, so that's the gesture that's burning, but from an origin furthest from the heart. I recognize this is for me, and yet I sense I make no difference. I know if we say love, we speak of many things. You mean the Buenos Aires moon. What do you think, what do you see when you think of the Buenos Aires moon? What does that tell you immediately? What reminds her of what's going on or like that moment when um, maybe she went to Buenos Aires and that mm -hmm. brought her the feeling of the keys, kiss or something. Yeah, so, she, so she's saying when you say love, you mean the Buenos Aires moon. So she's painting, a, Victoria said a reminder of good memories, perfect. So it's somewhere where they shared a moment together in a distant city, right? And if the moon is out, that means it's what? It's nighttime, right? Mm -hmm. So immediately you're envisioning the night. What would you normally feel during nighttime? If you're standing outside beneath a full moon, um, usually it's cooler at night, right? So it could be chilly and they're together. Yeah, Annie said a cool breeze. And so then the next line that she goes to write, it says, the blonde street lamps that dance you dance. So now not only are they in Buenos Aires under the full moon, the street lamps are blonde, right? So that means what color are they really? Yellow. Like ye yellow, right? So you see mm -hmm. the yellow and then it goes to dance, you dance. So that means that she wasn't dancing. So here's this man dancing beneath the moon. Or it could be a literal dance or a figurative dance, right? Like something happening between them. But there was an actioning happening. Um, and, then, um, and then it goes, but I know it as the wrist, a shoe a bruise, a bone, a stick. So what do you, and somebody said abuse, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so then that's what she's painting. So it's the wrist, a bone, the bruise is what, what gave that clue, right? And then when you read bruise, what is it that you, what senses um, get triggered by that? Not triggered, but what senses awaken with that? right? Uh, touch. Yeah, touch. So you, we all know pain. We all know what pain feels like. We know what a bruise feels like, right? And then um, a wrist. We know that wrists are fragile. We know that our wrists can hurt easily. Um, we know that our feet, you know, what feet can a brew, a shoe. So do you see that image, the imagery that she's painting in that moment where two people live the same thing but experience it very different, right? So maybe like being grabbed by the wrist when someone breaks it. Somebody said, Marisol said, un chipote. Yes. 
we call it like <laughs> we're getting hit with a shoe the shoe one threw me because my mom used to use a shoe so yes like, you know those kinds of things i'm like oh it's going it could it started sweet and then got like oh that's violet something's going on there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and so as because we know also that she's a, a latina poet right we're like, well, a chancla, <laughs> like, what kind of shoe was it, you know, and, and like, and Rodrigo is, is usually the name of another Latinos, and they're in Buenos Aires, so there's already also the cultural, like, subcontext of it, right, um, and so then we're going to share, a, no, that's not the screen I'm taking you to, that's my Spotify, um, <laughs> we're going to share the next poem, uh, ta -da, ta -da. The so and so's. Let me get to that poem before I share the screen with you. I love her Rodrigo poems. She has, so these poems are from the book, My Wicked, Wicked Ways. If you're interested in purchasing the book or looking it up online or checking it out on a digital library or doing whatever, it's called My Wicked, Wicked Ways by Sandra, Sandra Cisneros. And I think it's her first poetry book. That being said, shared this screen with my friends. We'll be reading the so and so's. Um, your other women are well behaved. Your magnolias and Simones, those with the fire brave skin, with the fine brave skin like moon and limbs of violin and bones like roses. They bloom nocturnal and are done with nary a clue behind them. Nary a clue, save one or two. Here is the evidence of them. Occasionally the plum print of a mouth on porcelain. And here the strands of mermaids discovered on the bathtub shores. And now and again, tangled in the linen, love smell, musky, unmistakable, terrible as tin but love is no i don't know how to pronounce that no rule whatever love is liberal what is language love is liberal as a general and allows love with no say so in these matters no x nor claim nor title shuts one wicked eye and courteously abides i cannot without such civility i don't know how to uh next page I don't know how to go, not mute as snow, without my dust and clatter. I am no so-and-so. I who arrived deliberate as Tuesday, without my hat and shoes, with one rude black tattoo and purpose thick as pumpkin. One day I'll dangle from your neck, public as a jewel. One day I'll write my name on everything, as certain as a trail of bread. I'll leave my scent of smoke. I'll paint my wrist. You'll see. You'll see. I will not out so easily. I was here as loud as trumpet, as real as a pebble in a shoe, a tiger tooth, a definite voodoo. Let me bequeath a single pomegranate seed, a telltale clue. I want to be like you, a who, and let them bleed. Isn't that poem beautiful? Okay, somebody here said, uh, chat. Uh, ba -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. I'm trying to do the chat thing while I'm still leaving the screen up, but I feel like you could see my whole screen. Could you see like my chat also? No? Okay. You guys are not talkative. Okay. Uh, I'll dang you from a neck, public as a joke. Okay, so what images did you see? We don't even need the screen, just from listening. What images stuck with you? Taste. I'll dang, what was that? The taste. The taste, right? Because she used a lot of different images, the smell, she painted the wrist. So when I was, when Riley, this is one of my favorite poems of hers because obviously I'm always distraught. <laughs> but one of the things was uh like how she describes uh the um, and here uh occasionally the plum print of a mouth on porcelain right so you could think of a mouth on 
a mug on a cut like on a coffee cup right like the lipstick and we know that if you're dating a, a man who presents um in the traditional masculine ways the lipstick isn't his right so then if there is lipstick on porcelain that's something a woman left behind and then she describes um she says uh and then here the strands of mermaids discovered on the bathtub shores and now and again tangled in the linen love smell musky unmistakable mm. terrible as tin so when you think of musk you think of sweat right you think of someone being like not just laying on the sheets but being in the sheets right like like somebody's here and then somebody left their damn hairs in the tub drain <laughs> yes rihanna so you see all of the pictures that add to the image that she's painting and uh what i always um bring up in my workshops is that uh the more specific you are with an image the more with anything in your in, with a feeling or an image that you're describing the more relatable it becomes because you're giving a reader more opportunities to see themselves poetry mm -hmm. if, if it's nothing it's a mirror so you're trying to reflect the clearest picture back to the right to the reader um and so the more details you give the more images you paint the more relatable your work becomes for them and so this is exactly what she did right because you're in this moment with her and maybe you would have never maybe you've never had a lover that had multiple other lovers but the way that she's talking about it you're like damn i would be upset too if i like if i smelled someone's musk in the sheets right like i would be pissed if i came and i got in your sheets and i'm like you had some fucking you know that kind of moment anybody else have um any other <laughs> moment that stuck out uh there was that moment when she's talking about like writing her name on everything because it's a very like for me for someone who doesn't really want to have kids like that's like a big part of like your legacy right is to like evidence that you were there right is mm -hmm. the idea yeah and and she is someone that doesn't like uh, didn't have children at this time and so ha what we know of her that she hasn't had kids right um she says uh, love is liberal as a general and allows love with no say so in these matters, no X nor claim nor title shuts one wicked eye and court it. So she's letting you know that she loves this person, but doesn't have a way to claim them. Right. And then she goes, I can't leave and be this civil. Like, I don't know how. And so like, I can't be like your tie that you slip off. Right. With a serious sigh. So you could hear the sigh of someone at the end of the day taking off that com that commitment of tie around their neck right mm. and then she's like i can't do it like that and then goes on to uh say the shirt of many buttons the woolen trousers and handsome shoes forget their reason for formality and take their eager liberty delinquent and lovely without you so um seeing his things around her house right makes her feel like she owns some part of him like and without you having them they become these parts of me because they're not part of your like work clothes or whatever and um i like the rudeness of the moon that lets me look at you without permission the slender bones da -da -da -da. so she describes them and then she goes uh no wait i'm reading the wrong poem ha huh? never mind uh, i clicked over too far uh, I who arrived delivered as Tuesday without my hat and shoes with one rude black tattoo and purpose thick as pumpkin. I thought that was an interesting image, right? Like, what do we know of pumpkins? Like a whole pumpkin. That's, those just are fucking heavy, right? Just are heavy and they're dense to cut through. Like how many of you have ever carved a pumpkin? You know, like they're hard, they're thick. And so to think of something as thick as pumpkin is uh, a really unique image that you don't really see anywhere else. And, but it's hella relatable because we all interact with pumpkins at least once a year, <clears throat> if not more. Um, uh, da -da -da. A certain, uh, one day I'll dangle from your neck public as a jewel. One day I'll write my uh. name on everything. As certain as a trail of bread, I'll leave my scent of smoke. I'll paint my wrist. You'll see, you'll see. I will not out so easily. I was here as loud as a trumpet. 
as real, this is where the senses come in, right? As loud as a trumpet, as real as a pebble in a shoe, a tiger tooth, a definite voodoo, let me bequeath a single prom pomegranate seed, a telltale clue, I want to be like you, a who, and let them bleed. So do you see the power of images in something, right? Like, and then painting these clear pictures. <laughs> they give you Amor Provido side chick vibes. Yes. I fucking always love Amor Provido poems. They're my favorite. Um, and so now we're gonna go into what, okay, so anybody have any questions before we move on? Because now you're gonna write. <gasps> write at a poetry workshop, what? So you have two options from your prompt, from the prompts that I'm gonna give you, okay? Um, you can either write about the first time you held someone's hand or write about the first time you left. I'm not giving you any context of you leaving what, I'm just telling you, write about the first time you held someone's hand or write about the first time you left and I'm giving you three minutes to write. There's no wrong way to write anything. I just want you to think of the five senses and of images and everything we just talked about while looking at Sandra's poems, okay? Go. The first time you left, L-E-F-T, sorry for my thick accent, my <laughs> thick as pumpkin, my thick as pumpkin accent. No, it's okay, don't apologize. You got three minutes. Okay, I'm back. 
I just had a whole conversation about my mom when she's trying to feed me dinner right now. I'm like, I'm teaching, mom. I feel like I'm in high school all over again. Okay, who wants to share? Amy, go for it. Okay, so this is um, I'll this is written about like my first like I guess official ex boyfriend. <clears throat> okay, you were four years my senior, but twelve years my junior. Your room cluttered with empty promises and games, escapes from the life you claimed I made whole. The musky smell of your father's weed hung in the air and urged me faster out the door. I never looked back, but I think you should soon. Oh, beautiful. I never looked back, but I think you should soon. Ah, fucking I love that. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, thanks. That's beautiful. Okay, next is, okay, does anybody, any images in that piece that spoke to you? The weed. No, okay. The weed, yes. And also, like, the I never looked back, but I think you should too. How many times haven't we walked away, like, physically walked, like, walked away? Okay, I'm thinking of a Sex in the City episode where Carrie is walking away from Mr. Big. I'm sorry, I, I'm obsessed with that show. But Carrie is walking <laughs> away from Mr. Big, and then she turns around and she looks at him, and he's looking back at her, and she goes, ah, I shouldn't have looked. Because then it would have just been him, like, looking at her. So that was the image that I got with that last line where I was just like, oh, yeah, like, you walked away like a bad bitch, but he longs for you. But, yeah, thank you for that, Amy. Yeah, no um, uh, let me see. Who said uh, Megan? Hi. Hi, Megan. So as Megan reads, please pay attention for, like, images and think of your senses, all of your senses, and see which ones are awakened by what she wrote. Go ahead. So this is about the first time I drove like myself. So I left like the house after getting my license um, without my parents in the car. The car handle under my hands, the fingers tapping on cold leather, heart and stomach, remembering my mother's parting words, Dios te bendiga. I'd never heard her do that, voice her fears in the form of a prayer. My mother always said that, she looks away. And for the first time, I realized that my mother believes it. She was still here. So these words, sacred talismans falling from her mouth, would become the sound of my leaving. Beautiful. Any images, anyone? Thank you, Megan. That was so beautiful. Thank you. And so, and like, full of beautiful images, too. Does anybody... Did any image stand out? The steering wheel under her hands, yes. The leather under under fingership, the sac yes, the sacred talismans falling from her from her mouth. Like, um, I grew up Catholic, so like we always had the little things like on our uh, like a sh like it was like a Pokemon card thing where you had like as many as you could on your chain. And so whenever I hear the word talismans, I'm like, yeah, those are sacred thing, like sacred. And so for them to for all these little precious things to fall out of someone's mouth. Thank you for that, Megan. Um, let's see, we're gonna, I'm gonna call on one more. If you didn't share now, it's fine. I'm giving more time for later for us to be able to have time to share more. Uh, a ver, quien, who else wanted to share? Um, so that was Megan. Alondra. Hi. Um, so I picked the left one. Um, I have left you many times and not at all, it seems. If you're a figment of my dreams, I think you should stay there. Because maybe in my dreams we can stay, splitting a single shot of whiskey, forcing the burning all the way down into us. We can stay dancing with such syncopation. We make all the real couples jealous. Our hips become one, and all the what are yous fade away. And that's all I have. Mm. I love how you said all the real couples. Like, that was, like, a very, like, that's a very simple way of saying a lot. And, and, and I think that that's something, something that we should all be mindful to. Sometimes the simplest way is the quickest way to get someone to see an entire universe, right? Because now that you said all the real couples, I'm like, what do you mean all the real couples? Like, why the fuck aren't you a real couple? Like, what, are we, should we go fight him? Like, what is he doing? 
Um, okay, so somebody said the burning all the way down of the whiskey. Um, what else, what other images were there in that that spoke to any of you? All the what are you, yes. Beautiful. Trying to find who else said the share. Amy, you're up next. Hi, okay, so when you said um, right about the first time you left or held someone's hand, I mm -hmm. couldn't really pick, so I just kind of did both. And this is Perfect. what I, yeah, this is like something what I would imagine it to feel like. So um, warm, thick pores, like the muffled sigh oozing from my lips. I grasped, clutched even, and you were not there. Sitting with the cool escape of air, I wait a slow promise and no one comes. Beautiful. I like, Brianna said, I like describing a size oozing from your lips. Yes. Super visual with the absence and the grasping imagery. Yes, the cool escape of air. Yes. Look at you. I don't even have to ask you. I'm already, and no <laughs> one comes. My heart. Oh, so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and then, so we're moving on to what a vignette is. So, a vignette is a brief verse or a stanza describing something using clear and vivid images to paint a picture of a moment in time. So I want you to think of vignettes as Polaroids, right? Like, you know how sometimes you have like a small stack of Polaroids from like the same party <laughs> or the or a same period in your life and they tell different stories, right? And so with a vignette in, in poem, it's not exactly like, we're not writing about pictures per se, but we are painting pictures. And so that's why I thought we needed to do an exercise in imagery because vignettes depend a lot in imagery because they're narrating. You're narrating to somebody else uh, a moment, a specific moment, um, uh, something that depends a lot on, on, on people being able to feel and see and, and experience what each scene is. So as the example text that we have is one of my own poems called Polaroids. And um, it's, I'll read that to you, but I'll also put it on the screen um, when I remember how I did it. <laughs> I don't know how teachers teach. Like, this is a lot. Carla, I'm in awe of you. Uh, okay. Share. Perfect. So it's small. Can I make this bigger? I don't want to fuck anything up. So I'm sorry if it's too small for you. <laughs> um, it's Polaroid. My favorite photograph of my mother, her red dress, her long curls over one shoulder, her hands, small ships taking port on her lap, the couch, a land she calls hers. She smiles without parting her lips, her night sky eyes staring into the lens. My favorite photograph of my parents. They dance together. My mother in her red dress, her hand curled around my father's shoulder, her bare arms, a new gold, my father's thick hair, a black cloud above them. He smiles, my mother does not, she stares into the camera again. My favorite photograph of myself. My parents sit on the sand, in Santa Monica Beach. The cars in the distance catch the sun in their metal. My parents are kissing, my mother's leg shaped into a question mark, my father's mustache, a stroke of danger. And there, in their eyes, a twinkle, me. So usually vignettes are separated by Roman numerals. So it'll be one, two, three. Um, the reason why I didn't use Roman numerals in this is um, because I write, I, I use that a lot and I wanted this to be a little bit different than other vignettes that I write. And I wanted them to kind of, um, the fact that I'm speaking of 
photographs, I'm making it clear that it's three different pictures. So I thought that I didn't need the numbers for that. But most of them are separated by numbers, right? Um, it's almost like when we talked about list poems, but these are all snapshots to tell a larger story. So uh, what I'm telling in this Polaroid is who my mother was before my father and then who my parents were before me, right? And um, let me go to the full screen. <clears throat> so what were, um, what were images that you saw in that, that you saw in that? You can go ahead and unmute yourselves if you want and talk. Like what spoke to you of mostly there? Like what were tools? The red dress, yes, the reoccurring red dress and the first two scenes, the curling of the hands on the shoulder. Your father's yes, hair. Told, yeah, my father's hair. So I, I, uh, I, reference, I reference multiple things in different ways in each stanza. So in the first stanza, I talk about my mother's hands, small ships taking port on her lap. And then in the second stanza is my mother's, uh, my mother's uh, hands are curled around my father. And then in, on the sand is no longer her hands, it's her legs shaped into a question mark. So it's um, in the larger context of where this book was, it was, a, it was uh, setting, the, I was setting up this poem to then talk about uh, my parents, my father was an alcoholic and was abusive at some point. So it was kind of setting up into that of like, cause it says his mustache, mustache is stroke of danger. So it's kind of foreshadowing that something is coming, right? Um, the question mark legs. Um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of imagery in that and I want you to pay attention. I'm gonna put it up again and let you see it. And then um, I want you to read it to yourself. I'll leave it up for a couple of minutes and then we'll talk a little bit again. <clears throat> And if you put in the chat, I can, I can see your chat, but um, talk about the images in this that spoke to you or that gave you a bigger picture because none of you know my parents. I, well, and if you do, I'm, how? <laughs> <laughs> my father hasn't been alive for 11 years, so I have questions, but um, none of you know my parents and, but there are things in here that could become relatable because of, of um, a twinkle in her eye hands curled around the shoulders, the night sky, night sky eyes. That she's smiling in the first picture and then not in the second. So it's, it's all about how these snapshots, whatever story it is that you're telling, is how you set them up where they don't necessarily have to exactly be part of the same thing but they have to lean on each other a little bit, right? So in the first photograph, you have everything that you saw in the first photograph. So now that the second photograph is being described to you, you already have a point of reference, right? You know that, um, you know that my mother like has dark eyes and, and um, she's wearing a red dress and she has long curly hair, right? So now when you're seeing her dancing with my father and she's still in her red dress, so you're like, well, it's probably the same day, right? Um, and then like her bare arms are new gold. So that tells you, what does that tell you about her arms? If they are a new gold, like what do we usually mm -hmm. think when we hear of golden? Yes, tanned, right? Oh, like cool. tanned, like brown, you know? And then, mm. um, and then uh, she's uh, da, 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 uh, a new gold, my father's thick hair, a black cloud above them. So <sighs> usually clouds, clouds are, 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 are representative of something, a storm coming, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then he smiles, he's, he's carefree. My mother does not, she stares into the camera again. So that's already setting you up for the last dance, for the last vignette, the last, because my favorite photograph of myself. So it's not of my parents anymore. And they're sitting on the sand on Santa Monica beach. And then the cars are in the distance with the sun reflecting off of them and they're, and they're kissing, right? So now they're having a moment of intimacy. They're no longer just sharing, sharing a space. But my mother's are my mother's legs are question mark behind her. So that's another um, more foreshadowing, right? And then my father's mustache, a stroke of danger. 
and there in their eyes a twinkle me. So what does that tell you when you say there in their eyes a twinkle me? Like it, it tells you that I've either either already been conceived or I'm about to be conceived, right? Like like that's the moment of my that's my origin story. Like this. So we're gonna be writing baby making, yes, Marisol. So <laughs> we're gonna be writing our own vignettes today. And I want the I want you to think about how um, everything works with each other, and I want you to paint three different pictures for me. Remember to use imagery, and I want you to think of your own origin story. So this doesn't mean that it has to be like how you were born or it has to deal with your parents. It could be the origin Sorry. story of. Sorry. It's okay. It happens. You know, I know it's not a booty call because. Unless, unless you're quarantined together, then, it, then whatever. But, or, that's um, <laughs> well, you know, in other times I would have made a joke that it was a booty call. Um, uh, I want you to think of your origin story. So it could either be the story of your parents meeting. You don't have to write about your parents meeting. It could also be the orange origin story of, of how you left your childhood behind and you became the adult you are today or how you left one part you left some version of yourself into this version of yourself. So just think of your origin story and I want you to create three different snapshots of it. And you're gonna have 10 minutes to do that. Okay. Will it help if I left up on the screen? Uh, no, I don't want you to copy it. So never mind. just write whatever you wanna write. Have fun. See you in 10 minutes. Actually, maybe I shouldn't have my sexy playlist. <laughs> Sorry, it's the time where all the neighbors start yelling, so I'm gonna mute myself.
I have returned and we have finished our 10 minutes. If you did not finish, that's fine. It's not an assignment you have to turn in. You can write to it later. But this is a time where we get to share with each other. And Brenda was ready. <laughs> so we will start with Brenda. And All after right. Brenda, we will go to Marisol and then we'll check in. All right, here we go. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. The night I chose to run away, the sky staring back at me, we both shared the same face. The vastness of uncertainty, the tears poured down my pimply face. Desperation soaked out of every pore. As I ran out the door, I could hear the screams, words of damnation coming out of my mother. They bounced off my back and back to her. The moon lit my way towards a new beginning. That's all I have. Perfect. And were you able only to do one vignette? Like you yeah. only painted? Yeah, I perfect. started the that other one, but. No, that's perfect. It's fine. There's no like, you didn't do anything wrong. That was still incredibly beautiful. Thank you for that. Did anybody have any of the imagery speak to them? The moon imagery, yes, Ruby. The mom yelling. I mean, I love the choice that the, about the night that you ran away. It's already like, I think titling poems is really difficult. And and I, a lot of folks have a hard time with it, including myself. And so the fact that you set it up with the night I ran away, you're like, what? Like immediately, like you lean in closer to the poem. And um, we all have to remember that the titles of poems are also a part of the poem. Mm. We tend to throw away titles a lot, you know? But just know that they're also a tool in, in the poem itself. Hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's offering me eggs. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, the joys of being quarantined with your family, right? Um, who was next? Who did I say was going to be next? Uh, Maris, what, what was it? Uh, the imagery part was hard. Uh, Diana? Or Marisol, did you want to share? Yeah, I could share. Okay, we'll go Marisol and then we'll go Diana. So I'm kind of going through it and, and I'm trying to think of, there's not a whole lot of, I feel like imagery, but I was, I was just going with it and I figured it would kind of sort itself out. So this is the thing, Paul, imagery isn't like, it's not, a poem is still a poem whether it has it or not, but it's just a tool for you to use. So read your poem and then we'll talk about it. Go ahead. So here we are reporting live from Boyle Heights where a group of young adults are hosting a small music festival across the street from Benjamin Franklin, Franklin Library. The asphalt steams, the skateboards scrape, the weather's considerate of us all. The SATs are taken, the music vibrates. Joining us today representing the youth, we have this young ray of sunshine full of hope and full of promise. Here we are reporting live from East LA College. A young journalism student is walking through. The sun adjusted itself just for her. Shorts as short as her insecurities, there's nothing she can't do except say no to the cute boy slanging nonsense on campus today. Here we are reporting live from the admissions office where word just came in that the budding journalist said no to our offer. No further information was provided, but reports of the ballooning ego in the sky led investigators to believe that it may have kept her trapped. This just in, we have just received reports that the ego in the sky has suffocated the young journalist. Her ambition and her future were pronounced dead this morning as she hit decline on that digital button. Okay, first of all, Marisol, this is full of imagery, like <laughs> bursting of very vivid, vivid pictures. So you did the assignment, you, you surpassed it. So thank you. And I love the creativity of it being like these snapshots in reporting and then like the eagle, in, the eagle eye, right? The, 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 that being what the demise of the reporter, like, oh, so beautiful. And um, eagle, like I said, I love you. What was that? Ego, like E-G-O. Oh, oh, okay. So what, read that again, <laughs> read that little part again, then I misunderstood it, I'm sorry. Um, here we are reporting live from the admissions office where word just came in that the budding journalist said no to our offer. No further information was provided, but reports of a ballooning ego in the sky led investigators to believe that it may have kept her trapped. 
Wow. Okay, so that changes the whole image, but it's still a fucking good ass image. So yeah, and then somebody said, I love your description of the weather, the sky connects the subject to the universe. Um, like the whole world against her by the end, and we ought to feel betrayed. It was sunshine in the beginning. Yes. The streaming sidewalks, the vibrating as it teeth over. Like it starts off with like you're reporting, so you're describing the scene and you paint the screen beautiful like the scene beautifully and then it just moves over i i really really enjoyed this and it feels like it was such a full poem in 10 minutes so good job um who else had thank you for sharing so much um who else had said they wanted to share say me because if i keep scrolling up i get lost okay elia um brianna and then we're gonna go to uh elia elia will you correct me when it's your turn but brianna Okay, Uh, so I also only really wrote one, um, but here it is. Legs like tree roots strangling each other, tangled in the comforter as tiny earthquakes rock his bone thin frame, bones and teeth clicking together, skin slick and shining with sweat. I keep watch as he tries to sleep through the worst of it. Beautiful. And did you have in mind where you were going to take it to next or? Yeah. So there was going to be three. It was going to be, that's kind of the beginning of a relationship I had. Then the next mm-hmm. would be the good time when he uh, was sober. Cause that's him going through the withdrawals in the beginning. And then yeah. the last one would be uh, how I am now, which is we're not together anymore. <laughs> but that was such a fucking good opener. Sorry. I cuss when I get excited. No, I love um, it. <laughs> <laughs> legs like tree roots teeth clicking bones and teeth clicking together the slick skin beautiful yeah the fact that you painted a moment of withdrawal without really saying it right like and and how you watched over him while he was having it was ah oh, these are so good y'all um who wanted uh elia 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 i had or a- elia if you want to add the white no no, we say Elia okay. in this house. Um, Thank you. So I'm just going, oh, I think you froze. I don't know if I'm frozen. You're good. I can hear you. So you can go. Oh, this is awkward. You're frozen, but we could hear you. Do you want to take a second and we come back to you? We'll come back. We'll come back to Elia. We think we lost her. Uh, we'll go to, um, John, I don't think you shared. Oh man. Okay. Can you, hear me? <laughs> you said me, don't act surprised. Yes, we can hear you. All right, cool. Um, I try to do the three-parter. Um, hopefully it makes sense. And I'm going to start from the top. Mijo, I love you, as grandma tries to hide me in the back of the house. Mijo, I love you, as she kicks me out for another man that is also known as uncle. Mijo, I love you, now in my later years, as we chill in my warm kitchen drinking coffee. I still love you. Oh, that's, that's lovely. Thank you for sharing, John. Um, I, would, I know that you had a really short time period but I would invite you to go back to this piece and like expand right like I want I want to know what the kitchen looked like I wanted to know what kind of chairs you were sitting in um I want to know like what's on the walls like who's like whose house you know what I mean like I want to know like all of the details that like always think of your readers as like the most cheese mosas cheese mosos like they just want to know everything right so so when you give them something this beautiful they want to know so much more But you started at such a relatable place where like calling you mijo, like a word of tenderness, mijo, mija, is something that we all get called when we're Latinx, right? And um, and, um, yes, Brianna said that she would love to know the smells in the kitchen. Carla said the repetition is great. I think the repetition is fabulous. Um, You all really understood what the concept of the vignette was. So thank you so much for sharing, John. Um, somebody else thank that you. hadn't. Thank you. Sorry, I think my call dropped. You're back. I'm back. Hello. And we're ready for you. Okay. Um, so I'll just go. So in this version, you're in a norte chasing the dream. 
the life you lived across the border abandoned, a daughter unknown, a promise forgotten, a photograph of both alters your path. In this version, you're strolling down a cobble road. You walk past the house with roses. A man calls you, you look around. A small girl you've never seen. The blood calls, an inner knowing. You are the father I've never met. The first three years of my life are a mystery. I could seek the truth, but that's where the magic lies. All I know is that I am my father's daughter in the best and worst ways possible. You didn't hear me, but I went, mm. <laughs> um, That was so beautiful. Like you use the repetition and, and repetition is another tool of writing that I'm gonna be introducing in another workshop, but that you all already use so well. Um, repetition use, usually is used to set a rhythm or is also used to like remember, remind the reader like what the center, like central point is. And so the fact that you kept coming back to the same moment, like the same, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it painted such a beautiful picture and then um, the blood crawls. And then what was the last line you read? Um, I said, all I know is that I am my father's daughter in the best and worst ways possible. Like, how many of us don't we hear that? Like, right, you're just like your whatever parent. And sometimes it's a moment of joy or pride. And other times it's just like, no, like, how dare you? So um, somebody else said, uh, I could see the truth, but that is where the magic lies. So beautiful. And that was so vulnerable. Thank you so much. And mm -hmm. I'm glad you came back. Um, Cor uh, Coraza. Yeah, hi, that's me. Hi, let's share, baby. All right, here I go. Amor de mis amores. Love poems. Sealed with kiss stamps. He gives her roses. The color of her cheeks. Sweet cotton candy. A blushed canvas. canvas. Innocence. Painters, my parents, brushing colors onto canvas. A dozen roses, amor de mis amores. A land of courage, a new country, a body, passionate stories, love. I become a color synonymous of roses. I didn't get to finish my last part. So how many parts was that? That was two. <laughs> two. Okay. So for your piece, I would suggest for you, it was beautiful. Like the color of your cheeks, like sweet cotton candy, like Carla said. And also like I became the color of roses. It was so beautiful. Um, I love that you used uh, all that imagery to, to like represent color. Because um, sometimes I, I think like, what? how would we explain color to someone with no sight right and so the fact that you did that you did that without having that prompt so that was so beautiful but because um there isn't repetition like there isn't a particular moment to signify you started the next image the next like polaroid like i asked you to um uh like which is fine this is where you would use numbers or new or numerals like one two three so that people would know that the one Snapchat, snap, snap, not Snapchat, snapshot ended and then the next one is gonna become. So I would just go back and add those like one, two, but it's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for that. Um, yes, like, like the fact that you gave Red so many images is so beautiful. Um, uh, who else wanted to share? Here I go. Go for it. You're ready. Go. <laughs> no, I'm um, So this is a brief homage to very three different stages of my life. So if it looks scrambled, I apologize for that. Um, you had 10 minutes to write this. So just <laughs> no need for disclaimers. Um, okay. So um, here I am following in my own company, ready to be born again. Everything I've left behind. I had to learn how to dress myself again. Um, high heels and not shoes. Baggy pants, baggy, baggy pants and not skirts. Maybe I'll keep the lipstick on. Floral days and shopping days. Careless days and sunburnt nights. 
Each night I was trying to reboot myself again. Forget your childhood, rise again. Childhood days, others play, but I stay. Only seven years have lived, others play, and I wondered if at seven I was ready to start again. Thank you for sharing. So beautiful. What were people's favorite parts? I like the ending. Can you read the last line again? Um, like the last, the last two lines. Others play, and I wondered if at seven I was early. It was early enough to start again. Like the fact that a seven-year-old is like, is it early enough to start again? It's so different. It's so beautiful. And then someone said the constant reference to being born again. Um, I like that you like started like at like the central point of of it is an unexpected point. Do you know what I mean? Like having to learn to dress yourself relatable. Yes. So beautiful. Thank you, Sonia, for sharing so much. Um, Annie, did you want to share? I'm trying to get y'all in before our time is done because I told you I'd finish at 8.30. Did you want to share, Annie? Sure. Um, okay. All the complaints about me. Too much, not enough. A thousand nails on chalkboard, wearing down my will to fight. An end to questioning, a confidence, a realization. I can walk out of the classroom and shut the door. Sunrise over the ocean, clouds on the horizon, but above them streaks of pink and gold, fresh salt air, sand between toes. I'm me once again. Mm. so beautiful I love I love like soft landings and poems you know like not not where it's like uh like does that describe it like a soft landing like like when you're writing it you're careful to like bring the reader all the way through to the end of the poem and kind of like gently set them down to be like okay so this is the end and so I really appreciate it that such a gentle ending Sand and connecting and coming back to you, said Money Phone. Uh, Brenda said, I love how you compared the nail on the chalkboard to their complaints. Yes. Yes. It was such, Money Phone compared the end to being it being cozy. It was so gentle. Annie, thank you so much for that. Does anybody else want to share? If they don't share, they're going to explode. Um, can I share? Yes. Okay, thank you. I don't want to regret and it. And then after, after CC, we're going to do Diana and then that, and then and then we're done. Thank you. I didn't finish either, but um, the sun is asleep. I think I am too. My mom dedicated two hands on the wheel, closing the gap between Morgan Hill and Sunnyville, home and school, our house and grandma's. The sun is asleep. I think I am too. My dad dedicated one hand on the wheel, taking me to Lily's to take me to school closing the gap on resources and access, his generation and my generation, his privilege and mine. Mm. So, I, yeah, I tried so good. See, see. <laughs> thank you. I was so nervous. Okay, thank you, I'm trying to squeeze y'all in. So, Vienna, come on in. Hello. Hello, my love. Hi. Um, I'm loving witnessing everybody's pieces, by the way. So I'm excited and I'm happy to stay if people want to still share. <laughs> um, okay, my, mine is called Not Married Anymore. Six plastic storage containers, transparent with gray tops exposing what happened here. Inside my entire work wardrobe, all my toiletries in sloppy stacks, all the sexy underwear I stopped wearing years ago and my books stacked neatly, neatly with titles facing out, everything methodically packed to show itself to the world. Then I'm putting boxes in the car, a cloudy blue Honda Fit with the seats pulled down, a big open space on wheels with a started stack, plenty of room to put and transport a whole life. My forehead and face glistening with a combination of sweat and tears, my hands adjusting my sloppy bun and you offering to help me late I've already done most of the work. That was so, like the images of the books 
with the faces standing out and like everything so neatly organized. Like the the description, like the 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 details that you gave, like were so made it so vibrant. Also, did, how many different vignettes did you have in that? Like how many that was different? Three. So three. The, I would also suggest the doing me, the numbers. Okay, numbering them. I didn't number. Mm -hmm. them. Yeah, just just. I mean, like on on paper, we can always separate them, like how I did in in the poem that I had used. But when we're reading them out loud, um, if there isn't anything specific, like um, like what I said, like my favorite picture of my mother, my favorite picture of my parents, my favorite picture of me, like there's no way to distinguish each snapshot, you know. Yeah. But that would be my like. It was beautiful. Um, and then in the comments, they're saying beautiful things. Thank you. Yeah. So, and then uh, our last person that I said, Alexander, I would, I would go longer, but then my mom would come offer me eggs. She just offered me eggs <laughs> again. So. Oh, that's um, that's I think mine's yes, funny. I, that's good. That's funny's good. good. Yeah. Um, because the first one made me sad. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. All right, painful pink ribbon trenzas and red piñata dresses galore. Feelings of wanting to belong, be a part of something, craving attention, validation, love, white boy crushes, unexplainable desires. Pero nadie te debe de tocar, because love is only relegated to the sexual. Wanting to be like the others with their American clothes and Lunchables, their Saved by the Bell English. But I settled for worlds and books, possibilities in the unknown, Wanting my first love to take me, dry humping my stuffed animals, but my resemblance to Chewbacca sent them running. Swaying hips, bouncing breasts, resounding in halls, unaware, naive to their power, nerd girl, the thing of fantasies, macking sessions, tasting of spam and garlic, just tongue twists, a rigid boundary, tongue fencing a hobby. I had places to be. This was not my career. That was beautiful, Alexandra. Again, too, I would suggest for you to use numbers because I couldn't tell where, like, it was a beautiful poem, but I couldn't tell the different snapshots, like, not distinctly. Yeah. Um, but no, but that's that's fine. This is, you only had 10 minutes to write and you came up with something beautiful and you did something that I think a lot of, I think a lot of us struggle with a lot and it's using pop cultural references without dating the poem. Do you know what I mean? Because a lot of times um, I recommend for people not to like refer, like I have a friend who had written a poem about Snooki from um, the Jersey Shore because she's Italian, my friend is Italian. Um, her name is Carolyn Brennan. And then she wrote this amazing poem about Snooki from the Jersey Shore. And the poem was great, but then like it lost its relevance, right? And so then like the poem doesn't have, doesn't translate without you knowing who Snooki is. But the fact that you use like the Save by the Bell English for all of us that aren't um, the cookie cutter American children, right? Like we remember that distinctly. And to think of Sack Morris and and just that, I'm like, oh, I could so relate with that. Um, and then the ribbons and the braids and it was just so beautiful and white boy crushes and all that. So thank you so much. Y'all wrote such phenomenal pieces today. I am so, so proud of y'all and just how you're willing to like dive in and share and um, every time I hold one of these workshops, I always leave feeling like re-inspired and, and wanting to reconnect with my work in a way that um, I don't usually do so. So thank you again for that and thank you for, for like joining me and we'll be doing this again uh, next week, next, we'll figure it out when, I don't know, we'll, 